put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Interstellar Move Review a team of space travelers go through a wormhole in order to find new habitable planets. Earth is out of resources and they are humanity's last chance for survival. I think that about covers what I should say of the plot. Try not to pick up too much of what people say about this as far as plot goes because they, they're they careful in the trailers not to give too much away and they do quite nicely on that and yeah go into this not knowing too much. Now some of the reviewers have said that this that the story of this is not good. I disagree. I think it's it's quite good the some of the characters are worth noting McConaughey's character is an an everyday man who he has to leave his daughter on earth and he may never return but through doing that save you know he can save humanity and at the core of this film is the love story between you know McConaughey's Coop and his daughter Murph. You know, he, he leaves and tells his daughter, I love you very much. And she's like, I know. The dialogue here has been called dull and clunky. Some of the time, at least, it approaches that. I didn't personally find it. I don't know. It didn't really. Yeah, it, it didn't really seem bad to me. I, I could tell where it was, you know, getting towards that, but it was never... I, I guess a good way to say it is that there was never too much of it in one place, in one scene. Like, if I went through the movie and just went line by line and counted up, I'm sure there are enough that it's a bother, but when you're just watching it, yeah, it's it doesn't really it it doesn't harm the viewing experience. It's also been said that the development of the female characters is poor or non-existent. I don't know. I I found them to be perfectly well-rounded personally. Now when Coop leaves some of his worries about Murph, you know, it's it's Renesmee, so I'm sure there's there's a wolf out there for her. Now, the there is a lot of exposition in this, and yeah, it it takes a while before you really. Yeah, it, it there's there's a while you're a while into the movie before something really exciting happens or before yeah there's there's a lot of exposition especially early on and there are certainly there are discussions where they're using these very you know these these ideas that we have trouble grasping that you know we don't deal with in in our day-to-day -day lives once once they're in space they have to make some very important decisions and yeah you it it does excuse me you you do have to really you know be be ready for the movie but it's 
I'd say it's well worth it. It's, uh, yeah. Now, uh, since Batman Begins, Kane has been in every Nolan movie, and you can see why. He's, he's an excellent actor, and he's used really well here. Now, the movie's highly immersive. It really just grabs you and pulls you along. Just... Yeah, if every every part of the the space adventure is yeah amazing. You you just ride out there with them. Now, it has been said that this movie is hokey, sentimental. You know, almost like a Hallmark card. Yeah. I really have trouble arguing with that. It's I see what you know what Nolan is trying to do, and certainly there's there is a lot of good drama and emotionally, you know, yeah, as as a whole, the movie works and. These the hallmarky stuff is it's there, but it's not like ever present, and it doesn't. There there are a few places where that turns up, and yeah, it's it's a bit distracting, and uh, yeah, but you know, yeah, the the again the core of the movie is this father-daughter relationship, and that is deeply effective from start to finish. Now, the effects are amazing. This is, this is very much a movie you want to see in the theater. The, the sound system and the, the massive screen that's how this movie is supposed to be watched. It the 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 use of silence and then loud, you know, noises and sort of more static shots and then a lot of movement. Yeah, it's it's very much a movie to watch in the theater and. Nolan knows how to work these things. He knows how far he can push it without losing us. It just this really pushes it right to the edge. You know, it's it's up there with the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises. He gets as much excitement and tension out of things as he can without us uh, without us being overwhelmed. I mean, I I categorically steer clear of. Michael Bay movies. I don't think I've. I don't think I've watched one since Pearl Harbor. And I, I, you can probably tell why. And so I have to go on everybody else's word. But from what I understand, his movies are overwhelming. You watch in the theater, and it's just you know, pounding you in the face with a rock. You know, and yeah. Nolan doesn't. He works it with it just with such finesse. He knows exactly how far he can push it. Now, the movie is two hours and forty-five minutes, and that's not counting the end credits. You you get up and leave the moment the you know the lights come on, the names start showing down on the screen. Two hours and forty-five minutes from the start to the end. So yeah, and it's been called too long. <laughs> I can see what they mean. I, I don't know what... I'm not sure what you could cut, though, but... Yeah, it is... That is where the movie does... You know, start to be a bit too much. Now... The... The inspirations of... You know... Movies such as 2001 Space Odyssey are very clear, and it's 
he really does something interesting with it. He, you know, Nolan. Yeah, he he has something to add. There's there's definitely always a lot to 2001, but he doesn't just, you know. Yeah, it's it's not just like a tribute. And one thing he noted in interviews was that the technology feels used, and that's very much the case. Everything you see, it, it feels real. It's It's got grit. Now, and the movie is made up mostly of real, you know, live-action elements, and what little CGI there, there is was projected onto the set, so the actors are not acting against green screen. And yeah, the, the movie looks amazing and has a... Yeah, there's there's a realism. You, you really, you buy what's on screen. Now, it's it's been said that this is no fun and... I don't know, I, I really don't see it. It's... It has a great sense of humor. There's the... I suppose a... Yeah, you... You know, in, in the trailers, we do see some of the... You know, there, there are these robots in the movie. And they... You know, they're not humanoid. They're basically like these geometric shapes. So, you know, most of the time, it's like you know, legs and body kind of thing. And, you know, they can they can take other shapes. And from very early on, we find out that one of these robots was like military something. So it's really, you know, it has a, you know, kind of dark sense of humor and it's, you know, it, it can be very honest and and such and that you know they get some humor out of that and they get this ongoing thing of this this talk of percentages like one of the first things Coop asks about the asks the robot about is what is your you know what is your humor setting it's at hundred percent could we take it down to 75 and you know from there on, they they talk about various qualities in you know percentages and yeah it's I mean it's not it's not a comedy but there's plenty of well earned and intentional laughs now it it is also a movie that is very... It, it really gets to you, you know, emotionally. I, I will definitely say that. More than I maybe expected from, you know, it's... Yeah, it's, it's more personal for, for a Nolan film. And I suppose that more or less that one reason that one of the things that Nolan wanted to accomplish in making this movie was to encourage more space travel, space exploration. And not only does that come across perfectly in the finished product, but this is also, you know, if, if any movie is going to accomplish that, and I hope it does, then this is the movie that will accomplish that. Now, as far as the, the Earth running out of resources, we have these dust storms, and there's this... Yeah, I don't, I don't want to give too much away, but it's just, it's very nicely done. You really believe that, you know, Earth is running out of food, plain and simple. Now, the black hole, 
I don't remember if it's a black hole or a wormhole. I'm going to be using the terms interchangeably, which I realize is completely the wrong way to go about it. They had like a theoretical physicist working on to make sure that it looked the right way. And yeah, it looks amazing. There's, yeah. <laughs> there are those that are going to say you, you need to watch this movie just to see the visual effects. And I lean towards that position, certainly. There's, there's plenty of other good reasons to watch this movie, but if you just want to, you know, if, if you're just looking at this and thinking, hey, that looks like it might have great effects, yeah, it does. So if, if that's what you're going for, yeah. Now, the... Some of the themes are hope, having to adapt, how we spend our time, how, how we spend our lives. Are we using the time right or are we wasting it? And what makes us human, very much. Now, the, I suppose that was, the acting is amazing. Everyone, yeah, everyone does great. And I mean, this movie casts, there are a lot of really, really talented actors in this. And yeah, they all do really, really well. Now, this is very much a Nolan movie with all that entails, all the good, and the... <laughs> the things about him that some sometimes bother. Excuse me. So, yeah, if, if you're, you know, if you're kind of on the fence about Nolan, this one, yeah, it's, it's very much a film of his. I, you know, Everything has been thought through. There's there's setup and payoff all over, and the tiniest little things that you think are just going to be you know little details or something, they actually pay off. And yeah, it's 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 this enormous construction of a number of different scenarios and ideas that he weaves together and. Yeah, some, yeah, if, if, it's very much if, whether or not you, whether you like or dislike Nolan. Now, I suppose that more or less covers it. I will say that the ending some people are going to hate the ending. Some people are going to love the ending. It's very much, um, yeah, you're, th that one's going to be really divisive. I will say that I, I think it's interesting. I feel like it, you know, you, you can't tell from, anything leading up to the ending, whether or not you're going to like or dislike the ending, but it does follow up on what was set up. You know, it, it gives answers. You just might not necessarily like those answers. And I can't claim that you're wrong for not liking those answers. And yeah, I think that about covers it. So yeah, it's, highly stimulating, very intelligent, and I mean that in just, you know, it, it makes you think, it's it's clear that a lot of, you know, a lot of theorizing, there's, there's very real science, you know, at work here. You're, you're you know, it's, it's not complete, Everything you see on screen is exactly as it would be, but 
there's there's very very little that you can't see being you know real or at least potentially and it's yeah gripping drama it's got some really compelling space adventure kind of stuff and yeah I personally I, I'm ecstatic I watched it it was worth every minute please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it